Second base has a ton of upside heading into 2024. Let's discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into Fantasy Baseball Today in 5 on Tuesday, October 31st. Happy Halloween. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White, and I am dressed up like Davis Schneider on Halloween because obviously we're talking about second baseman. Duh. Let's take a look at the way too early rankings for next season. The top five includes Mookie Betts. That's right. He has second base eligibility, followed by Jose Altuve, Ozzy Albies, Marcus Semien, and Matt McClain. You know, Scott, there might be some debate over who the second second baseman should be drafted, but Jose Altuve, man, 3.9 fantasy points per game. That would have been tied for seventh among all hitters this season with Jordan Alvarez. He's at 300 or better two years in a row, 17 home runs, 14 steals. That was a 28 homer, 23 steal pace over 150 games. I, I know he's older, but I just trust Jose Altuve to perform like a borderline first round pick whenever he's healthy. Yeah, and, and you're, the thing is you're not going to have to use a first-round pick to get him. You nope. can get him late second, probably, at the at the earliest next year. And I think it's a great value. He's been a great value to the past few years. Remember, he entered 2023 with a broken thumb from the World Baseball Classic, and his value, his draft stock plummeted because of that. And everybody who drafted him, I, I'm sure, was thrilled with what they eventually got from Jose Altuve. He does tend to miss a little bit of time with injuries each year. You know, not usually a broken thumb, but uh, you know, hasn't played 150 games since 2017, but he played more than 140 in both 2022 and 2021. And it's back to being a base stealer, still delivering high batting averages, scoring a ton of runs atop the Astros lineup, and is just a a stud who, uh, who, we, who deserves to be treated like that, especially at this position that is lacking in studs for the upside it does have. One of the new names that's ranked up here at the top is Matt McClain, who we only saw for 89 games this year, but he hit 290 with 16 home runs, 14 steals, of course, with the Cincinnati Reds. He's got power, he's got speed, he has a great home ballpark. The only question here, the strikeouts, 28.5% strikeout rate. How much does that worry you? A little bit. I, I would say that's the wart here for Matt McClain. But of the second tier second baseman, I feel like he has the best chance of entering the top tier in his sophomore year because he does provide that power and speed in equal measure. He has such a favorable home park, favorable supporting cast, potentially with the as many up and coming hitters as the Reds graduated this past year, McLean included. Uh, the strikeout rate was bad from the start and it went up the longer he was in the majors. It was over 31% the last month he was healthy, August. But you know, even if you have him hitting 260, even 250 instead of 290, like he hit as a rookie, I think likely you factor in a likely 25 homers, 25 steals, if not 30 30 for Matt McLean. And I, I don't know, the batting average is not that important at that point. And there's a good chance he just stops striking out so much uh, in his second season as well. So I think there's a lot to like here for McLean. Six through 10 in the early second base ranks, we see Nico Horner followed by Ha Sung Kim, Cattell Marte, Zach Geloff, and Bryson Stott. With the exception of Cattell Marte here, Scott, there is a lot of speed to go around with this group. There is, and I think I think who you target from this group, and really you could rope McLean in with them. Uh, it, it's, it's going to depend on what you need in the draft at that point because it... These players are divided less by, I think, overall potential in fantasy than just what exactly they're going to deliver. And if you want, if you're, if you're looking for upside at that stage of the draft, you're going to go for McLean or, or Zach Geloff, two players who profile pretty similarly, similar strengths and weaknesses, and, and probably the most upside of this group. If you're looking for speed, though, you're going to gravitate more toward Nico Horner, Hassan Kim, or Bryson Stott. Uh, who could all give you 30 to 40 steals potentially. And, and there are distinctions beyond that. I mean, Nico Horn is going to give you virtually no power. Kim, Stott, they'll give you some power, but not, not to the extent that like Matt McClain and Zach Geloff will. Uh, and, and then you have Cattell Marte, who doesn't really provide much speed, but is is the most 
proven hitter of the bunch and 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 certainly has had years where he's been close to a fantasy stud such as this past year 2023 Cattell Marte was pretty awesome inconsistent from year to year which I think is is another reason to downgrade him apart from the lack of steals but again if if you don't really need steals at the point you're taking a second baseman then Cattell Marte for the upside he offers is probably the one you want and you know what we're not going to talk about him but my number 11 second baseman Glaber Torres he's kind of part of this tier as well where I, I think you could justify making him the sixth second baseman drafted if you just want security at the position and you care about power more than speed. I, I think I, I think it's a very crowded group and and a group that offers a lot of upside. Um, but you know they're they're distinct in what they offer. There's upside, but how exactly it manifests is is pretty unique to each player. All right, for more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. (laughs) 